Hey, good morning. I just wanted to come back again and talk to you some more about redeeming the time. It's just been kind of a series that we've been walking through since I can't be with you on Sunday nights and Wednesday nights and other days of the week like we normally are. I just thought we'd use this time. Um, this time is given to us. It's here. It's the reality that we live in. And so what do we do with it? What do we do with the time that God has given to us in this quarantine, in this sometimes imposed solitude? How do we deal with it? The first time when we met together, I just talked to you about memorizing scripture. And, and I want to encourage you to memorize scripture. And then we talked about meditating on scripture and what that means. And then we've been talking about praying. Uh, I'm going to spend a little bit more time talking about prayer. I think because as I shared with you earlier, it's, it's, it's one of the, the weaker areas of my life. And it's something I have to continually work on. I, I, it ought to be as natural as breathing, but to be quite honest with you, it's not. Um, it's, it's not difficult for me to get into the Word. I think part of that is I know it's Monday, but Sunday's coming. Um, every single week, every single day, I'm constantly living under the pressure of the fact that there's a sermon coming and you're waiting to hear from me. You're waiting to be fed the word of God. And so being in the word is, is, is not hard for me. And, and now it's work to memorize it. It's work to meditate on it. But it is especially for me hard just to, to make myself do what I need to do in terms of prayer. And so I, I read a lot about it. I know I told you um, last week that, that prayer is um, probably, I have more books on prayer than any other topic in, in my office outside of commentaries. And, and so I, I'm constantly working on it. I'm constantly trying to read and learn how to do it. Um, as, I, as I was looking at just at, at, at what it means to pray and, and, and trying to figure it out, I read this little book, um, how to pray by a guy named Pete Gregg. And I don't endorse everything that he says in the book. <laughs> he doesn't know me. He wouldn't endorse everything I say. So, I, But he's, he and I are a little different in some areas of theology. But in the area of prayer, he really helped me. And, and I shared this with you before. He, he says that when you pray, keep it simple. I, I don't think you have to be fancy with God. I love the fact that, that when my children, especially my youngest, when she wants something to drink, it's just from the back of the house, dad, dad, until she gets my attention. I said, what? Can you get me some water? It, it's just simple. She doesn't say, oh, great father. Oh, wonderful man. She doesn't go through all of that. I would laugh if she did because it's not her. But, and it's not me, but keep it simple. And then I think, keep it real. You know, it's, it's really cool to read the Psalms and just to go through those Psalms and see just how real they are. It's just from the heart. It, it's, it's, it's just them pouring out their self, themselves to God. So keep it simple, keep it real. You don't have to fake it with God. God knows your heart. If you're struggling, you don't have to act like you're not struggling. He's the one that you can be honest with because he already knows you. And then he says this, keep it up. Constantly, as we seek to pray, we want to keep on praying and keep growing and keep learning. The more we do it, the better we become. Now, as we think about prayer, let me just stay with Pete Gregg for a second. He takes this word prayer and he, he gives you an acrostic. And I want us to look at that just for a moment. He says, if you want to think about prayer, think of it in these four things. Pause, rejoice, ask, and yield. Okay? Pause, rejoice, ask, and yield. What does that mean? Let's just think for a moment as, as we get ready to, to come to, the, to prayer. Um, I want to, I just want to talk to you just for a moment about pausing before God. As we do this, we, we, we come to this place that, as the psalmist says, we just get still and we know that God is God. You, you may have more time on your hands than you've ever had in your life. Okay. Pause. Be still. How does that look? 
the last, since really since spring has hit, this is the way it looks for me in the morning. I get up. Um, I get up at varying times. I don't ever get up on the same time. I probably ought to be more disciplined than that. But I, I get up before um, Kim's usually up before I am or right about the same time. But I get up. I go hit, uh, the night before. I, I, I prepare the coffee. I get everything ready. I go hit the push the button on my coffee maker and, and the coffee's starting to make. I go in and take a shower. Um, I get dressed. Um, you can tell since I've been doing these videos, getting dressed for me over quarantine has been a hoodie or a t-shirt. And so I put sweats and t-shirt on, I get my hoodie on. Um, I go, when I get out of the shower, I get my cup of coffee. I get my book of Psalms, almost always the Psalms. And I go out with my cup of coffee on the front porch. And I always start with just, just silent time. I don't say anything. I don't do anything. I just sit there. I just, I kind of, and I don't want you to, you know, people talk about breathing and all these other things, but it helps me just to breathe in, breathe out, just kind of calm myself for a moment. And, and just, I listen to the birds that are singing. I watch the squirrels that are out there in the front yard. I do all that. And I just sit there for a little while, I pause. You know, pausing is, is a vital part of our life. It's interesting. Um, the little word, you find it all the way through the Psalms. It, it's, it's the word Selah. Um, if, you, if you go to, for example, Psalm, um, Psalm 4, I think it is, where it's used every two verses. And, um, you know, answer me when I call, O God of my righteousness. You have given me relief when I was distressed. Be gracious to me. Oh, man, how long? Shall my honor be turned into shame? How long will you love in words and seek after lies? Selah. And most people believe it's a, it's a pause, a musical pause, that they sang these psalms and, and, and you were to stop. I, I remember uh, John Phillips. He, he was a Bible teacher and commentary writer, and I heard him preach several times. And he preached on the psalms. And he said that little Selah is kind of like a, a there now. What do you think about that? And so every time you come to that sailor, you stop, you just pause, and you think for a moment about what it is that he's been saying. We need sailors in our life. We need times that we can just stop and pause and be before God to be still and know that he's God. I love this verse in Psalm 131, verse 2. But I have calmed and quieted my soul. Now, if if I was in, a, in an emergency, I'm not going to go through this first. If I'm in an emergency, I'm crying out to God. And, and you need to be able to know that you can cry out to God anytime. But I'm talking about when you get alone, just one-on-one, -on -one, and, and you spend time with God. When you get to that place where you can spend time alone, I think you ought to stop with, start with a pause. Start with a stop. Just stop. Be still, know that he's God, pause, think about who he is, what he's done, calm and quiet your soul. That's the pause. When you pray, start with a pause. Don't just jump into your wish list. Don't just jump into your prayer list. Just stop for a moment, pause. But then rejoice. I love what he says in Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Spend some time adoring him. Spend some time praising him. I mean, the last couple of days, man, I've been praising him for a beautiful grandson. And I want to praise him. I want God to know how much I appreciate what he's done for me. I want him to know how much I love him. And, and so I, I typically try to begin. I know people use the acts acrostic for prayer, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. You know, adoration, I want to begin just to rejoice in the Lord. Jesus said, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. He wanted the name of the Father hallowed. He, he, he rejoiced in the name of the Father. The name is, 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 is his character. It's who he is. And then I think it helps us just to pray a psalm. I, I, I always, at this point of time, I will come back to, to the psalms and, and simply 
it, it starts in many different places, but I've shared with you lately, I just sit there after I've paused for a little while and I begin to uh, uh, just adoration. I usually start this way. Oh Lord, my Lord. Oh Lord, our Lord. How majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babies and infants, you have established strength because of your foes, to still the enemy and the adventure. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you're mindful of him? The son of man that you care for him? Yet you've made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. You've given him dominion and he goes through what he has dominion over. And he says, you've put all things under his feet. And, and, and he goes through the sheep and the oxen and the, and, and the birds of the air and the fish of the sea and the things that swim along the path of the sea. And then he ends it again with, oh Lord, oh Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You know, it's just something about just praying that, coming back to God, adoring him. And so I, I want you to think about that just for a moment today. As you pray, use the word of God to help you pray. Just pause. Think about who he is. Spend some time rejoicing in him, adoring him, not just asking. We'll look at ask tomorrow. But would you just spend some time today praying, pause, and rejoice. Then we'll get to ask. Then we'll get to yielding before him. I'm praying for you. I miss you. I can't wait to see you. Hope to see you on Sunday. Hope you join and worship with us. I hope that you're a part of that. Reach out to people. Pray for people. Use this time wisely. Praise the word. Pray the word of God. Praise the word of God as you praise our Father. Thank you for listening to me. God bless you.